Fellow men, today we find ourselves in the midst of a society marked indelibly by the feminist movement of the 1960s and the equal footing it fought for. As a result, the institutional pillars that once made marriage a necessity are increasingly becoming relics of the past. In this new era of equality, where women are in the workforce and capable of supporting themselves, we must ask ourselves a hard-hitting question. Does marriage, as traditionally understood, continue to make sense? Historically, marriage arose to formalize and regulate relationships between men and women, primarily to secure the well-being of women who were, by societal norms, economically dependent on men. Women, for significant portions history, were not allowed to work or own property, leading to their dependence on men for survival. Hence, marriage served as a guarantee for the support and protection of women in a world where they were deprived of the ability to provide for themselves. The implication of this, gentlemen, is that the primary reason for marriage was to create an environment where a man was responsible for a woman's welfare for life. This was considered a necessary construct when women didn't have the means to support themselves. But today, in a world where women have broken through the glass ceiling and claimed a place in all corners society, including the workforce, we are compelled to question the continued relevance of this arrangement. The question we find ourselves grappling with is this. If women are now capable of self-support, is the traditional institution of marriage, founded on principles of female dependency, still necessary or fair? The crux of the issue lies in the basic principle of fairness. If women have fought for equality and have achieved a significant measure of it, which includes the capability to support themselves financially, then the traditional arrangement of marriage, based on economic dependency, starts to appear antiquated. Women, having secured their place in the workforce, are now capable of bearing their own financial burdens. This seismic shift forces us to re-evaluate the foundations of marriage. Women it seems women have hit a snag in their pursuit of equality, they cannot have it both ways. It's logically inconsistent to fight for equality and independence, yet continue to expect men to shoulder the majority of financial responsibility, both during the marriage and in the event of a divorce. If equality is truly the goal, then it extends to all areas of life, including financial matters in the context of marriage. What we see today is a stark dichotomy. Women have equal rights in the workforce, yet when it comes to divorce, many men, burdened by an antiquated legal system, shoulder a disproportionate financial fallout. Imagine a successful entrepreneur who dedicated his adult life to building a business. After investing countless hours and life savings, the venture flourishes. However, upon divorce, despite his wife being financially independent with her own well-paying job, he is mandated to relinquish half of his assets, including the business he painstakingly built. This scenario effectively halves his life's labor and savings, not due to business failure, but as a penalty for canceling the marriage contract. This prevailing system leaves men questioning the fairness of a system that requires them to forfeit the fruits of their labor even when their female counterparts are perfectly capable of supporting themselves. In essence, the more gender equality women achieve, the less practical and fair the traditional concept of marriage seems to become for men. It's about striking a new balance, acknowledging the shifts in societal norms, and revising outdated conventions. Because, gentlemen, if women are to be true equals in society, then the financial responsibilities and risks, once the burden of men alone, must now be shared equally. And in that reality, we must question whether the institution of marriage, as we've known it, holds any relevance or benefit.
Count Basie, the orchestra, Lullaby of Birdland. <laughs> Much obliged you hopped on board for this snazzy trip through American life in the 1940s and 1950s, all captured through nifty vintage photographs. If this flick's got your motor running, don't be a square. Click on that jolly bucket of bolts to subscribe to the channel for more top drawer content just like this. Thank <laughs> you.